Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Analyzing Historic Photographs. I am Mike B, and today we're going to be doing another Vietnam War Kodachrome photograph. That's why I'm playing dress up to keep in keep in tune with the theme. And um, today we're going to be looking at a photograph that's pretty interesting, and uh, I don't know anything about. I haven't seen it before today, so you get to see my first impressions. Now, this is just going to be me analyzing a photograph for a few different reasons. The purpose of this video, there is actually a purpose in this series. Um, <clears throat> one is I have a lot of educators contact me and say, hey, thanks for doing this because a lot of my younger students that I'm trying to get to be into history, they don't have the same approach at analyzing historic photographs or content in general. And by actually f teaching people how I analyze things, not saying my way is the right way, but it's just the way I do it from a historic standpoint and getting, you know, going deeper than just what the surface level is that everybody can see. Like, you know, it's a couple guys or it's a tree, it's, a, it's an elephant, it's a tank, you know getting into looking at details and, and different things that you might not see right away is a pretty cool thing and it's very valuable for preserving and analyzing history um, the other reason is i just like doing it it's very easy for me to make these videos and people seem to love these so far the feedback's been really positive and people want me to keep doing this in different conflicts i'll be doing as many as possible very easy for me to make uh, very enjoyable and what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be analyzing a photograph and it's going to be based on my knowledge, my level of experience and stuff like that. And just my observations, my knowledge may differ from yours. Either I probably know a lot more than you do, or I probably know a hell of a lot less than you do, or we know about the same. So this is just going to be from what I know from my analysis and my style. Your mileage may vary, but I'd encourage you to throw in the comments. If I miss something, or if you want to add something, or you disagree with me on something on an assessment, we'll get a discussion going. That's what history is all about is having discussions about things. Now let's get to the photograph. So we can see right away, these guys all have their hands up. You see a few guys and then you see lily, or I think those are lilies, some kind of flower and vegetation. It's really green and you see people and they're in up to their chest in water. That's the initial thing. Now, most people just go, oh, okay, next. Now I'm looking at this going, okay, there's a lot going on here. Now let's try to figure out what time frame this is, what time period in the Vietnam War this is, because there's a many interesting things going on that I don't even understand. So first of all, the guy in the front, he's got a Mitchell pattern helmet cover on a helmet. He's got a t-shirt on and I can't really see much else. He's got gear, but the lack of a, an elastic camouflage foliage band on his helmet indicates to me either very early, very early army, even pre 65 ish or most likely Marine Corps. Now the guy behind him that's holding the 1911 and the grenades up above his head, very interesting character. We'll get back to him. I'll analyze that next. And then you see in the background, you've got guys and it would, uh, they're wearing flak jackets. So that would indicate that it's not super early. They're wearing flak jackets without, uh, the one guy's wearing without a t-shirt and he's got no cover on his helmet either. And they've got M14s. So I don't know what the guy in the front's got as far as a weapon. You know, the second guy's got a 1911, and then the rest of them look like they have M14s. So this would definitely point heavily towards being a United States Marine Corps photograph. I don't know where this would be in Vietnam, most likely somewhere up north. But the second guy, I don't really understand what's going on there. It's very cool. It doesn't, it doesn't look like he has any gear on. He might actually be an advisor that this might be 1965 or possibly possibly 64 but most likely 65 when a bunch of marines got to vietnam and they started supporting the advisors so that's what i'm going to lean towards on this because that guy has got it appears to be a world war ii helmet cover on or it's one of those with the mosquito net that's just tucked in it looks more it doesn't have the foliage bands on it so it looks like it's actually a world war ii united states marine corps frog skin cover without foliage loops or uh, poles it looks like but it could be a korean war one and two either way it's very interesting why he's holding two m61 fragmentation grenades and a 1911 and nothing else and has a cigarette hanging out of his mouth in true american uh you know warrior fashion uh, beyond me and why the first guy doesn't appear to have a rifle um but he's got you know the flak jacket on the gear and whatnot it, it's insane to me what's going on in the first two guys the the rest of the photograph the guy is kind of wading into the you know chest deep water that makes more sense but these first two guys are just it's just it's just baffling the hell out of me what's going on with those two guys but um <clears throat> yeah you can see the third guy with the m14 he's just getting into it so they might having to be cross this for crossing this for some stupid reason but it looks miserable it's wet there's snakes there's bugs there's 
whatever it probably smells really good but you know with all the nice vegetation but it's hot maybe it maybe it actually felt good for them because it was a little bit cooler than the hot humid air it's a very clear crisp photograph too except for the guys in the back but as far as the two guys in the foreground the first two guys it's very clear and you can see the vegetation really well it's a nice Kodachrome photo that captured the real color in real time, and it isn't somebody's interpretation of what the color should be. No offense to people who colorize photographs. I love their work and appreciate it, but it's always cool to see actual colors that were there instead of uh, somebody's interpretation that might not be 100% accurate. So that's why I love Vietnam War photographs, because that's the first time you really see a wide scale of Kodachrome photos, because it became more affordable and more people could, you know, had access to them. So whoever's taking the picture is probably in the water too, but they obviously went over first. Who knows? Maybe it's a stage photo. It doesn't look like it though because these guys look like they're tired and they're not having a good time. But uh, I wouldn't be having a good time going through chest deep water, man. That's that, that would suck. It's not going through the water. It's just being wet for the rest of the time after that. That sucks. Anyway, um, yeah, the guy without the helmet cover. It seems like the third guy with the M14's got a helmet cover, and then the fourth guy does not maybe he's not even carrying a rifle it looks like either uh, these guys might be carrying a machine gun a medium machine gun maybe a tripod who knows i really can't see and it gets kind of blurry if i zoom in but they might be carrying um, a 60 millimeter mortar as well who knows there might be a mortar mortar team i don't know i don't know what the hell is going on in this picture it's really interesting though i think it's really cool so yeah, I think that's really all I've got. I don't know what kind of flowers those are. They might be some sort of indigenous flower to Vietnam. But if you know, throw that down in the comments. They're very pretty. I like the vegetation. I love that kind of vegetation that grows in water. Anyway, that's all I've got for this photograph. Um, that's really all I can analyze. So let me know if I missed anything, which is very likely, like in every photograph, if you notice something that I didn't or you know more context. I would put this as, again, being U.S. Marines, probably in 1965. Uh, with a, with a possible advisor that's just carrying a you know he's a cowboy slinging a 1911 and two hand grenades but anyway so yeah that's all i've got i'd like to thank the sponsors of this this video and this series and my channel my patreon supporters and youtube, YouTube channel members um i really love the fact that i'm self and crowd funded and i don't take corporate sponsorships just for the sake of taking them if i don't believe in a product you know people that just kind of shill because they want the money it drives me nuts um, if I'm going to have a sponsorship like that someday, possibly it's going to be a product that I 100% back and agree with and love. I'll still do reviews if companies want to send me stuff, but I really like the idea of only really being super accountable to myself and you guys, the viewers. So that's why crowdfunding and self-funding is my preferred way to go. And you guys make that possible. So five bucks a month more on either platform gets you into my discord server, which is really fun. I have a lot of cool information exchange there. It's really cool conversations. I pop in there quite frequently you know talk some shit or post a picture or whatever learn something and then pop out so that's a really cool incentive it helps me be able to afford videos that i would not be able to do funding so um just you know out of pocket like ballistic tests uh, shooting videos uh, getting things to make videos on getting stuff to play dress up to make the video a little bit more interesting this stuff all costs money and um crowdfunding really allows me to do things that i never thought i was gonna be able to do on this channel um so I really do appreciate past, present, and future supporters of this channel. Now, if you can't support the channel financially, I totally get that. That's not a problem. If you still want to support my work, you can do what the YouTube algorithm loves and favors, which is liking this video, commenting, and subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. And also, the best way to support my work is actually just to share this video around. If you thought this was educational, you thought it was fun, it could spark up a cool conversation about something, go ahead and share it. That really does help. So those are all ways you can support me if you want to. If you don't and you just want to watch, hey, that's still cool by me. I really appreciate you guys watching, all of you, and we'll see you on the next episode of Analyzing Historic Photographs.